tonight. Praise the Lord. It's a Wednesday night. Hallelujah. And how many of you realize, and I, I mean, I don't have to ask you if you realize, uh, some of you had a long day today. It started early and you're here. Praise God. We've got words from heaven for you tonight. Hallelujah. And because of that, the Bible says that God confirms his word. God confirms his word with signs following things that we can see. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, we, each time we've been here in the last few years, especially, we've seen wonderful manifestations of the presence of God. Amen. And, uh, but I knew that I'd get in trouble if one of these times Kevin didn't come. And so uh, we're really blessed with my favorite tonight. Hallelujah. 
And uh, so we, we just uh, are just thrilled and honored any time we're here with the family. And we know that God's got good things in store for us. So just open your heart to receive, hallelujah, everything he has for us. Praise God. Let's just lift up our hands and magnify Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, our focus is on you. Our focus is on you tonight. Oh, what a time in your presence. Every time we gather together in your name, you said you are in our midst. Thank you for your presence tonight. We honor and magnify you tonight, Lord Jesus. Be God in this house. Be God in people. Be God in our bodies. Be God in relationships. Oh, we give you first place. He is here, he is here in our midst, he is here, he is here, he is here in our midst, he is here in his power, in his glory, in his demonstration, he is here. beginning and the end. He's the first and he's the last. The final word, the great
praise tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Are you happy tonight? Yes. Glory to God. Isn't it just good that no matter what goes on during the week, you come into a place like this with people of like precious faith, start worshiping God, start singing unto the Lord, kind of releasing faith a little bit, get in the corporate anointing, and all of a sudden whatever was going on really doesn't matter anymore. Isn't that an amazing? You know, one, one of these times we're going to be singing that song, and all of a sudden Jesus is going to come, we're out of here. You know? <laughs> Amen. Anybody happy about that? Anybody happy about going to heaven? <clears throat> How many of you are glad you're not in jail tonight? Yeah. Amen. Some of you ought to be extra glad. Amen. For some of you, that I get both hands and both feet in there. Glory to God, I'm not in jail. <clears throat> Man, it is so awesome to see you. You know, this is like coming home for Annie and I. Uh, we love this ministry. We love the Obergs. Every now and then, I, I, I just think to myself, I got to get me some Oberg. You know, I you know, just felt like we haven't been around them enough, you know, and, and when we come here, <laughs> when we come here, we know faces, you know, some places you go there and you've been there five times and you still, like, I don't remember them, you know, but when we come here, it's like coming home, and so we're, thank you for coming tonight, you know, if you, if you did hear that I was going to maybe be preaching, and, you know, you might have wanted to stay home, I, I, I just, thank you for showing up, but I have a feeling you're, you're always glad to be here because you have some of the best pastors on planet Earth. Amen. I mean, that's, I'm not just saying that. I, I always, when I get around your pastors, I always feel like there's a, a demand placed upon, you know, heaven when we get together. Like, there's something that, if it hasn't already happened, it's about to happen. You know, just, when we get together, it just seems like, you know, it just seems right for anointings to come together and God has something to say and something he wants to do. So um, anyways, I believe tonight is going to be amazing for you. Uh, uh, I chose to come on this trip knowing that we were going to uh, stop by here is because the Lord has really put something on the inside of me that I thought, you guys have got to receive it. You guys got to get in on this, you know. So are you ready tonight? Or do you have your expectors turned on? You know, you know, don't let the next crowd get more than you got tonight. You know what I, I mean? J just pull so much out of me, I feel like I don't have anything else to say after tonight. Would you do that? And, and, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to be like, you ever have a waiter at an Italian restaurant? How many of you like Italian food? You know, if there's a, a restaurant that you can get your mouth watering is when a, you're at a good Italian restaurant and they describe what's in that dish. Like, we're going to have pans seared, you know, red snapper that's going to be, have little crunchy edges. It's going to be pan seared with butter, and then we're going to put a little lemon butter caper sauce over it. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't compete with the lightness of this such flaky, delicate, soft, white fish meat. And then we're going to have some roasted potatoes on the side, and we've the chef has decided to put some rosemary on that. Man, if you haven't ever had that, that, that is the bomb. And, and then on top of that, then we have, you know, and they start describing it, and you go, man, I am hungrier than I realized, you know. Well, I want to tell you, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like the waiter. I'm just going to tell you what's on the platter tonight. Is that all right? So, so you can kind of really quickly jump into the river tonight with where, where God wants to take us, and then God's going to demonstrate himself tonight. Is that all right? Is it okay if we let God be God? Is it okay if we have some demonstration? Is it okay if we actually trust God to come? Firm his word with signs following. Would that be all right to this church here tonight? Okay, well, that's what we're going to do here, and we're going to get to some healing uh, ministry here at the end for those of you that may need healing tonight. But he here's what's so strong in my heart is God is endeavoring to show us how to activate the anointing that is already in our lives. Um, there, there's just some things that we have seen. How many of you have ever, when you were in elementary school, uh, you had that little book with all the dots on the, on the page, and you're supposed to, you know, connect the dots, and then like, oh, it's a rabbit. You know, have you ever, you ever, you ever do that? Well, I believe by the help of the Holy Ghost, we're going to help you connect some dots that has always been there, but when you see some things in the Word, and then you, you hear about some of the things that we have just, God has helped us to be a witness some things, and we've learned some things, 
and then we, we can help you um, walk in a, a greater awareness of activating the anointing on your life. What I'm talking about is the scripture in Revelation chapter 12. It talks about that we, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about you activating the anointing that comes when you testify and you proclaim what it is God has done for you. Because here's the reality, and it's an amazing reality, is that your testimony, and how many of you know God has a testimony? Matter of fact, let's go real quick to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's just start there. One thing about what I'm ministering is there, there are several ways to ramp up into it. And so every time you get up to minister, it's like, Lord, how, you want to, how do you want to get us in that position? So uh, that's why I was just talking there for a moment. But look here, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 2, and we're going to start reading with verse 1. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come to you with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. Everyone say, God has a testimony. How many of you know God has a track record? How many of you know that there's no failure in God? And, and what is awesome, and I, I want you to just keep this in mind, that God's testimony is your testimony. Now, we talk about your testimony. It may be the day you got born again. How many of you are here? You remember the day you accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You can remember when you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness and you were translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And how many of you know that for, you know, for many people that shackles came off, bondages came. Maybe you got free from drugs. Maybe you got free from alcohol. Maybe your marriage was going through problems. But when the love of Jesus came in your life, things changed. Can you say amen? amen. So you have a testimony. And we're going to talk more about your testimony. But God has a testimony, and it's an amazing track record. But let's go on reading here. It says, verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. Verse 4, and my speech, everyone say, my speech. And he said, and my preaching, everyone say, my preaching. Now, keep in mind tonight, as we go through what God has us to impart to you tonight, you know, the world will try to get you to not preach. Have you ever heard anyone say, hey, speak to the hand, don't preach to me. And the thing is, that's so antichrist in the spirit of the world because God has given you a preach. And he wants you to testify. And that's why if you've ever heard anyone say, don't preach to me, it's because they don't want to hear the truth. And they don't want to hear the gospel and they don't want to really hear this, the, 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 the bondage that they're under has kept them bound from, from even having a desire to hear truth. Amen. So let's keep on going, going here. Verse 4 says, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration. My speech and my preaching were a demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. But here in that, in that first verb, verse, you see that God has a testimony. And I want you to know that, you know, we know that the, the, the word of God is quick, it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word is anointed, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The, the truth of the word of God has the ability, the power to set people free. I mean, there's, there's such um, uh, power made available by just hearing the word and speaking the word. You know, that, that's why we have preaching, because how can someone hear unless someone goes and preach? Amen. And, and, and so it's, it, it's an amazing uh, thing that we have this ability this, in this earthly vessel that we are, that we have the ability to cause light to shine out of darkness whenever there's an atmosphere uh, that, that I've been in meetings where it seemed like there was darkness, where there, there, it seemed like the people didn't have a spirit of victory. And all of a sudden you start preaching and teaching the word and all of a sudden you sense the atmosphere change. You just start testifying. You start, you know, God confirms whatever we preach. If we'll just be bold enough to preach it, then God has something to confirm. Amen. And so, uh, matter of fact, let's go over to Revelation chapter 12. We just quoted it just a moment ago, but we want to turn there and look at this. Hallelujah. You bring your shouting clothes. 
Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, it says, And war broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought his angels. But they did not prevail, nor was their place found uh, anymore in heaven. And it says, So that great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, this is a revelation, prophetic revelation, a vision from uh, John. And so going on here, it says, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. They, they, that means they took a stand on the word of God they were fully persuaded. They were even willing to lose their life because they were that much fully persuaded that they knew heaven was their home. They knew they were a new creature, and they knew that heaven was their home and that they, they had a relationship with God through Jesus. And so they, they would stand for that no matter what, the, what, what came their way. But it says here that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Everyone say the blood of the Lamb. Now, you know, I mean, we could do a series on the blood of the Lamb. Wow. I mean, just thinking about the price that was paid for us. So your redemption and, and your victory is found in the finished work on the cross for what Jesus had died for us when he shed his blood for the remission and for the cleansing of yours and my sin. And aren't you glad you're not going to get what you deserve? You're going to be treated better than you deserve. Come on, somebody. You need to be shouting a little bit better tonight. I said, how many of you are glad... You're not going to get what you deserve, but you're going to get better than you deserve because of the blood of Jesus. And so there's great power, great power. I know at times in my life, if I've ever had, say, flu symptoms trying to get on, on me, I, I, I know I've just kind of been laid out, but, you know, or I've been sitting there thinking, I just wish these symptoms would just leave me. And, and one of the most powerful things that I've done, you know, you know, you activate things by the acknowledging of everything in you in Christ Jesus. That's what Philemon verse 6. I love Philemon verse 6, that your faith will become effectual. Your faith will become effectual by the acknowledging of everything in you in Christ Jesus, or everything that's in Christ Jesus that's in you. That your faith, the communication of your faith, will become effectual. Well, how many of you want your faith to be effectual? How many of you want the communion of your faith to produce something? Well, I remember just different times when I've been just, you know, symptoms trying to get on me. I just say, devil, I'm going to draw a line right now. Here it is. I'm drawing the blood line. Just like the children of Israel. Remember when they, they came out of, 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 of the control of Pharaoh out of Egypt? And, and there was that time when, you know, Pharaoh wasn't bowing to, you know, Moses' God, the God of the, all creation, and, and he kept resisting. And so God says, well, we're going to just bring one more curse on you then if you don't bow. He goes, and so he, they told, they, they instructed the, chil the, the children of God, uh, God's people, to put blood over the, the doorposts. And, and, and God said, when the death angel comes, that that death angel will recognize the blood of Jesus. And when he sees the blood, that death angel will have to go right on by. Well, I tell you what, if there's a time when you're up against the wall and it seems like symptoms aren't wanting to go, it's time to draw, it's time to just brush some, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over your doorpost or just draw it right out in front of you wherever you're at and say, devil, I want you to know this is a bloodline right here. I'm on the covenant side. You feel the power? You sense that? I'm on the covenant. Hallelujah. Every time I say that. I'm on the covenant side. And if you try to even come across this bloodline, you are so in the wrong place because you don't know you already got whipped on the cross and it's even going to be worse for you if you try to cross this. That's what you got to do sometimes. Look at uh, Titus, the first chapter. Amen. I tell you what, you're going to be glad you're here in this building tonight. I'm just telling you. Titus chapter 1, we're going to start... Uh, reading with verse 2, in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie prom promised before the time began, but has in due time manifested his word through preaching. Do you see here that God said that God manifests 
his word through preaching. Well, we already saw in 1 Corinthians, the, the second chapter, that Paul said, not that I come to you with wisdom of, man, of, of enticing words of man's wisdom, but I come to you with power and demonstration that I came with you with words from heaven that are filled with power and demonstration. Preaching causes demonstration. Your testimony will cause demonstration and manifestation. God said that the word will become manifested whenever you preach. And this isn't just for fivefold preachers, fivefold pulpit teachers, apostles, evangelists, because the Bible says that when Jesus got up and declared, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he went on to say there in, in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, that the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach. He said in, that, in those uh, uh, few verses, he said to, to, to preach de deliverance to the captive, to set at liberty to, uh, to those that are blind, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. If you look at uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and right on through there, you'll see Jesus, when he said, when the Spirit of, of the Lord is upon him, he was anointed, that anointing caused him to preach. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, it says, you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Well, if the anointing is what caused, is what Jesus said caused him to preach, then the anointing that's on all of us will cause us to preach, because it's the same Holy Ghost. That's why in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses, one with evidence. That means when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and the anointing comes on the inside of you, the anointing, the same Holy Ghost that Jesus was anointed with that caused him to preach, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is on you, it will cause you to preach. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Everyone say, I'm a, I'm a preacher. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you some more background. Turn, if you would, to Acts chapter 10, talking about preaching, uh, proclaiming. We're talking about testifying. We're talking about there's power activated when you testify. And we're going to see, this is what you could say is the scriptural bomb for what we're talking about tonight. Everyone say, here's the scriptural bomb. Now, look what it says here. At, well, just, uh, I'm going to start just telling you what Acts chapter 10 says, and then I want you to look at two verses, and it's going to be verse 42 and verse 44. Acts chapter 10, we're going to look at verse 42 or, or, and verse 44. But here's the thing that I want, I want you to know about Acts chapter 10, and you're going to love this. Are you all here tonight? Yeah. It's going to get gooder and gooder, I'm just telling you. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to me. It's holy good to me.